Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratics, another word problem. So we're told a projectile's height to time relation is modeled by this function right here, h equals negative one over two gt squared plus v naught times t plus h naught, where this g over here is the acceleration of gravity, which in this case is 9.8 meters per second squared. V naught is the initial velocity, that's gonna be in meters per second, and then H naught is the initial height. And then we're given that the initial velocity and height of 50 meters per second and 12 meters respectively, right? Initial velocity is 50 meters per second and the height is 12 meters. And given that, we have to find how long the projectile is in the air Part B, the max height. Part C, how long the projectile is above 100 meters. So first thing we wanna do is, let me erase this just to give myself some room here. And what we wanna do is we actually first wanna input these into that function. We also wanna input this 9.8 for this G. And so what we would end up having is negative one over two times 9.8 t squared, that's our independent variable. The v naught, the initial velocity is 50, so we'll have 50 t plus the initial height of 12, like that. And so if you multiply these two here, you'd end up with negative 4.9 t squared. A lot of times you'll see these kinds of questions have this negative 4.9 as an a value for the quadratic. And this here, this formula is from physics. This is where it is coming from. We're taking the negative one over two, multiplying it by the acceleration of the gravity, which on earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Right, so, sorry, this should be 12 here, I just realized. So right here, this ends up being the quadratic that is going to model this projectile that is going to be launched from an initial height of 12 meters with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. So that projectile can sometimes be a ball that just gets thrown up. Sometimes it could be maybe like a firework that gets launched off from an initial height, right? This is the formula to model something like that. So What's happening is let's actually make just a diagram that we could follow. Let's make a rough diagram here. So we're modeling H in regards to T. Now, they don't ask this, but we are given the initial height of 12 meters. And we can also get the initial height because we could plug in zero for T. And notice, what would we be left with? Well, we'd be left with an h value 12, because this would go to zero, this would go to zero. And so at a t value of zero, we have this initial height like that. And notice that this quadratic is gonna be opening down because of the negative a value. And so what's happening is it's getting launched up, reaches a maximum point, and then it's coming back down like this. And so basically, we're gonna fill in the characteristics of this graph as we go along. Now, first thing they're asking for is how long the projectile is in the air, meaning when does it hit the ground? Okay, so whether it asks you when does the projectile hit the ground or how long is it in the air, both of those are the same question. They're basically asking for this T value right here. When is it going to hit the ground or how long is it in the air for? Well, what we could do is we could solve for that value because notice that over here, what's the H value gonna be? Well, it's gonna be zero, right? So we could plug in zero for H over here. And notice that we're working with a ton of decimals here, so I would recommend throwing this in the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. So notice that the A value is negative 4.9, the B value is 50, the C value is 12. So basically the T value is gonna be negative B, which is negative 50, plus or minus B squared, which is gonna be 50 squared minus four times the A value, 
times the c value all over uh, 2 times the a value of negative 4.9 like that. And when you do all the algebra for this, you'd end up with these values. So you'd end up with this value under the square root, then the square root of that is this. And then you'd end up with two different solutions here, 10.44 and then negative 0.23, right? If you do negative 50 plus 52.3 divided by negative 9.8, you'd end up with this. If you do negative 50 minus 52.3 divided by negative 9.8, you end up with that positive 10.44. And it makes sense that we got two solutions. So this positive 10.44, that's going to be right here, like that. And then notice that this negative, where it's coming from, is if we extend this quadratic, this is the other intercept right here, negative 0 0.23 like that. Even though we're ignoring it because time can't be negative, if you just look at the abstract quadratic without a word problem attached to it, that's where the other intercept is. However, we are not worried about that uh, intercept. We're more so worried about this one right here. So the answer to part A, how long is it in the air? Well, it hits the ground at 10.44 seconds, right? So it's in the air for 10.44 seconds. So that right there ends up being the answer for part A. Now in part B, what is happening, I'm actually gonna keep this over here because we're gonna be using it for part C. Um, for part B, what they're asking for is the max height. They're asking for this over here. So different ways to get it. What we can get first is the axis of symmetry or this t value, which is going to be basically the t value of the vertex. Now, because we are given the intercepts or because we solve for the intercepts in part A, we can get that t value, the vertex or the axis of symmetry by adding both of those intercepts and dividing by two. And if you do that, you'd get approximately 5.105 around, I think. I'm gonna round it to 5.1. It's a lot of rounding to do. Uh, I personally maybe would recommend using more decimal places, but I'm gonna just use one decimal place for this particular example, just to move through this a little bit quicker. So you get approximately 5.1 here for this t value basically the time it takes after 5.1 seconds it's going to reach that maximum height another way you can get that value is um, doing negative b over 2a right this formula here this general formula for um, a standard form quadratic which is what we have here. So we would take the B value, which is 50, go negative 50 over two times the A value, negative 4.9. So negative 50 over negative 9.8, you're going to get approximately 5.1 as well. So different ways to get that axis of symmetry or to get the T value of that vertex. And then what you do is once you have that T value, you want to find the corresponding h value, well, we could take that 5.1 and then just plug it in to the equation that we're given. So we'd have h equals negative 4.9, 5.1 squared plus 50 times 5.1 plus 12, like that. And when you do that calculation, you'd end up with 139.55. So that would be this value over here. That's going to be the h value of the um, of the vertex, that's going to be the max height right there. So that's the answer for part B. Now in part C, what they're asking for is how long is the projectile going to be above 100 meters? Now, by the way, this is not the scale. I know it doesn't make sense that this here is 12 meters and then up here only is going to be 139.55. This should probably be a little bit lower. Okay, I'm just doing a rough diagram just so you get a visual so you understand what is happening with the algebra. We don't even have to make this diagram here. You can go straight into doing the algebra, but I think having that respective diagram does help you understand it. Okay, so I understand everything is not to scale here. 
So what they're asking for in part C to show you on the diagram is let's say that we have 100 meters right here and it makes sense it would be somewhere here between 12 and 139.55. So notice it's gonna be at a height of 100 meters at two points, here and here. So when we solve for, let me erase all this stuff just so there's not too much going on here. We're gonna solve for when is the height gonna be 100. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, okay, 100 equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 50t plus 12 like that. We're going to be solving this equation. When we solve it, we're going to get two t values. We're going to get this t1 here. We're going to get that t2 here. But they're asking for not the times that it hits 100. They're asking for how long is it above 100 meters? How long is it right there in that area? Well, we would just take the difference between those t values, right? Because it's going to hit this 100 first time here, then it's going to be above for all of that time, and then it's going to pass the 100 on the way down. And so the total time that it's going to be above 100 meters is going to be the difference between those t values. And we're going to get those t values from solving this equation. And so we would bring the 100 over, and we end up with this right there. Sorry making tons of mistakes in this problem. That should not be a t squared, it should just be t. And then when we bring the 100 over, 12 minus 100 would give us negative 88. And the reason why I wanted to keep this drawn out here is because we're gonna be throwing this into the quadratic formula again. And the only thing that's changing is the c value. It's not gonna be positive 12 now, it's gonna be negative 88. That's the only thing that's changing. And so the only thing that's going to change is this C value. It's going to be negative 88 like that. And when you do this algebra, when you throw it all in the quadratic formula, you would end up with this under the square root. Then you end up with 27.84. Then you're going to have two solutions because of the plus or minus in the numerator. The two solutions you end up getting is 7.94. 2.26. So it's first going to hit the 100 meter height at 2.26 seconds. That's going to be on the way up. Then on the way back down, it's going to hit that 100 meters as well uh, at 7.94 seconds. And then how long is it going to be above 100 meters? It's going to be the difference between those values. So it's going to be 7.94 minus 2.26, which would give us 5.68 seconds. So that right there would end up being the time, the total time that it's above 100 meters, right? So just an example of a projectile type of problem. Sometimes you'll be given this equation. Sometimes you'll have to create it. They'll just give you the format of it and then you're going to have to plug everything in. But whichever way it is, the algebra ends up being the same.